On December 1st, 2025, Sam Altman walked into OpenAI headquarters and declared a code red. Now, I'm not exaggerating. An internal memo was sent to OpenAI employees that said, stop everything you're working on because we are in dire straits. Now, I want to walk you through what happened because sometimes it feels like I'm watching a telenovela and this month in particular has been one of the craziest months in AI development I've ever seen. Let's go backwards. Recently, ChatGPT 5.1 came out. It was supposed to be smarter, more conversational and more focused on the user experience and I want you to pay attention to the dates here. So this comes out on November 12th, 2025. Well, there is this constant cycle that we're in every week or every month, someone is putting out the new best model. Now, right now, that is kind of open AI. They seem to be leading with ChatGPT 5.1. They're not the best at everything, but it's a pretty good model. Now, very soon after, Google announces Gemini 3 on November 18th, 2025. You don't have to know all of these numbers, but this blue highlighted column is Gemini's performance on all of these benchmarks and it outcompetes ChatGPT 5.1 in every single one of them. The only thing that they are not winning in is coding, but nonetheless, obviously this model is better than OpenAI's. And this is one of the real important benchmarks that I want you to pay attention to because this is kind of the one that everyone flocks to first as the most impressive. If you don't know what Arc AGI is, it is simply a logical low level test that seems to, according to human experts, truly require deep reasoning skills. So they're easy for humans, really hard for machines. For the first time, we were able to make significant progress, almost doubling what we were able to do before. And so everyone sees this and they're like, oh my God, Gemini 3 is amazing. So we went from OpenAI having the world's most powerful model, we skipped Claude and went to Gemini. But not too long later, just six days after Claude Opus 4.5 is released. Now, I will say that the only benchmark that Opus 4.5 is truly the best at is coding. It is by far the best coder, but Gemini is still winning in all those other categories that non-coders probably care about. We've quickly moved to Anthropic being the world's most powerful model for coding. Now, Sam Altman is stressing. And let's look back at some context as to why he's stressing, because there's a lot going on this year with OpenAI. First of all, they have made commitments to pay back over $1.4 trillion in data center agreements. And the reality is for people like me, I'm using the best model. And if you're not the best model, I'm not using you. So that is very bad news for OpenAI. If they want to pay this money back, they need to make that money. <laughs> and so as part of this internal memo that goes out, <laughs> Apparently, OpenAI was working on adding ads to ChatGPT. Thankfully, Sam Altman says, halt that we need all hands on deck because we are getting squeezed from every direction. I really hope this never comes out. Please, please, please. And I don't know if this video is real or not. I could never find the official source, but there are rumors of something called garlic that is being released. And all that I heard about it was this. <laughs> Uh, I don't know yet. It's gonna be some sort of pasta, and I roasted some vegetables. I'll make a little salad. It's gonna be garlic in the pasta somehow. Looks like an awful lot of garlic right there. I don't think I've ever seen so much garlic. I. <laughs> First of all, I love garlic and I actually do chop that much for some of my meals. But second of all, this is just a very weird, very ambiguous promo for whatever it is that's coming. And so 12 days later on December 11th, 2025, something happens. Introducing GPT 5.2. Now, given that it's only been 12 days since Code Red was declared, you'd expect eh, it might be a little better, but it turns out they are reporting some pretty incredible things. ChatGPT 5.2 allegedly does task at 11 times the speed of experts and less than 1% of the cost. On top of that, all these benchmarks that were just blown out of the water by Gemini are now just being destroyed by GPT 5.2. But this next one is the craziest one because that Arc AGI leaderboard has become, and although Gemini 3 was one of the most amazing improvements we've had in a while, it's been immediately beaten and immediately beaten by quite a large amount. My suspicion is that this is a model that they had internally that they were using and were still improving on and just decided to release it early because they needed to be the best model in the world. 
Now I have fears for safety and I hope that these companies continue to prioritize safety in spite of the very obvious arms race that's going on amongst them. Now you may think that this is a lot to release, but what really drives my fears is that there's more. Now, I didn't mention this, but you might have heard of Nano Banana Pro, and it is Google's equivalent of Midjourney, an AI image generating model that performs pretty damn well. I had some trouble using it at first, and I asked it, please make this 4K with great lighting, to which it says, I cannot edit public figures. Well, first of all, thank you, Google. I'm very honored that I'm a public figure. Oh, you mean me? You mean Joshi Codes? That's crazy. And I said, it's a photo of me, and it gave me this. Now. This is just a random black person with a do-rag. And so I asked it, why did you just generate a random black person? To which it said literally the exact same photo. I felt like I was being trolled, but this is all a tangent because I just needed to tell that story somewhere to somebody. I was actually able a couple of weeks later, I guess I'm no longer a public figure, to get it to edit photos of me. And in stress testing it, I was seeing if it could make me different races since it was so obviously characterizing me as a specific race. I asked if it can make me look Chinese, to which it did this. And I'm not gonna lie, this blew me away. I was like, oh my God, that is one of the most impressive things I've seen in image generation. Cause I feel like in the past, these image generating models were actually just like making something that kind of looked like you, but faking it, whereas now it feels like the image models are directly editing your photo as though they had Photoshop. Now, this is all a very long tangent to say that on December 16th, 2025, the new chat GPT images dropped to outcompete Nano Banana. Sam Altman comes out and says, this is also a very fun way to use it easily and get fun images in chat GPT. And for some reason, he decided to say that this is a great example of the fun stuff you can get. Now, I haven't shown an image of it here, but I actually did try generating a photo of Sam Altman as a sexy firefighter on a December calendar, and it refused to serve that to me. I even tried making a sexy photo of myself, but it also refused that. I'm not getting the same fun results that Sam Altman is getting, but nonetheless, it does seem to be an impressive model. So now, we have two new models, 5.2, which is leading many of the benchmarks. And in addition to that, we have this images model, which is allegedly one of the best models for image generation and image editing that are out there. But wait, there is somehow more. Introducing ChatGPT 5.2 Codex. Now, this is a model that is specifically for coding. As a programmer, I'll be honest, I've never liked the 5.2 Codex models, and there's a few reasons why. The first, what the hell is this naming? Which one am I supposed to use? Just give me the best one. Tell me which one's the fastest. Tell me which one's the best, but might take longer and tell me which one is the cheapest. Like those are the only things that I want to know. Uh, but somehow we have all these names that are confusing and it's just overwhelming. And I'm just gonna use the better model that I know is better from Anthropic or from Gemini. The other part is that it is extremely slow compared to other models. There are times where it will wait up to 10, 20 minutes, which is so soul draining for your process. And you're like trying to get into a flow state and you're trying to collaborate with this thing. And then it's like, all right, hang on, give me like 30 minutes and I'll answer you. It's just, there's no way that's ever gonna work for someone like me. And I'm sure for many other people, in fact, Looking upon many of the comments, the same sentiments have been rising about this. This user on Hacker News says, I feel there's a point where all these benchmarks are meaningless. What I care about beyond decent performance is the user experience. Now for me, this isn't necessarily true. Uh, I, when I'm coding, I absolutely will go to the most important coding model and I use it for a lot of preparing for research. I use deep research to uh, help me synthesize large amounts of information. I use it to help me design experiments, uh, etc. So it is very important to me that it is more intelligent, but I imagine that for most people, they aren't doing that and just want to know what they want to know as quickly as possible. And so I see where this person's coming from. Now let's look at one more comment. In my experience, the best models are already nearly as good as you can be for a large fraction of what I personally use them for, which is basically as a more efficient search engine. And again, this seems to be 
the popular conclusion. People say, I don't need it to be a PhD level genius. I need it to stop lying to me. I need it to stop being confidently incorrect. And I need it to just feel better to use. So given all this, even though According to the benchmarks, it's the most powerful model in the world. The sentiment isn't really capturing that. And so things keep happening every day, even up to now. Google has released Gemini Flash, which in some cases uh, is outperforming Gemini Pro. And this race is just going to continue to happen. But I think this is the entire overview of the OpenAI Code Red Saga. Thank you for watching. Go outside and spend some time with your loved ones.